so people are hungry. And I, like I told somebody that if care is not taken, that's why the government have to do something about this. That look, the farmers are not free in their farms. They can't. They are not farming. So they, uh, definitely this will affect the price of food stuff. The later you have. It is a normal procedure, the normal economy uh, principle that uh, the higher the price, uh, the, the lower the price, the food, the higher the price. So it is what we have is the economy principle that is taking its effect now. The rate of suicide will definitely come up. The, the crime rate will, will be overwhelming. And that even the police will be will be overwhelmed. And I don't we don't, we don't get to that level. Let the federal government, let us we, we, we urge the government, we plead with the government, we pray to the government that they should please intervene. Look into all these things. How do you push food production. Look at those areas that have comparative advantages in those areas, the ones of rice, the ones of yam. Give them, let's give them proper security. Nigerians have stopped feeding three times a day for a very long time. But the, the, the fuel, uh, increase in fuel prices is compounding the problem because fuel increase affects every other thing because of transport. But what I expected Nigeria to do, you see before when I was young, you have a train that runs from Lagos to Kano. There's a train line from Lagos to Kano. They can reactivate these lines. Look at we are at Abuja. We say we are building the modern city, the most modern city in Africa. We don't have a metro line running Abuja. As old as London is, if you go to London, the train system is still working. The internal rail system in London is still working. In Paris, it's still working. You understand me? You can take a train from Heathrow to, uh, to Victoria, from Victoria to anywhere you want in London city. Here, you say you are building a modern capital, we don't have a train system. You have to rely on these rickety buses, eh? where people are uh, 419, one chance so that they are using it to rob people. Well, Nigerians, Nigerians are, are passing through the, perhaps the tough, one of the toughest of times. And then the prices, the inflation rate, even given by the Bureau of Statistics, is on the steady increase. There has hardly been a decline in the inflation rate. And of course, we are dealing with things like unemployment. The economy generally has not fared fine. And then the rising food prices. And my challenge is not even the inflation. is that nothing is being done practically to check it. There is still insecurity in the farms. How do you explain the situation in places like Zampara and other states where farmers have to pay bandits to allow them to go and cultivate, to allow them to harvest? These are things that have come out in the open. They are no longer secrets. How can food be the same? Why would there not be inflation? And again, the economy has not been properly managed. I think that that one, you know, any, any reasonable person knows it. Our economic policies have not been up and doing. And that's why the currency and all that. Of course, the currency fluctuation is largely also responsible for the general inflation. As uh, clashes, is affecting the price in the market. Because uh, the farmer cannot go to the farm to, to do their normal uh, activities over there because of the headers, uh, the headers. If their crops are not being eaten up by by cows, you will discover that they themselves are being affected by by kidnappers. They kidnap them and and, and demand a ransom from them. So, the proper activities in the farm and uh, the uh, farming system now are no longer there. People that are no are no longer willing to go to the farm to farm to do a lot of uh, production. And when there is no production, the demand is very high. So the, the forces of demand and supply actually affecting the, the price in the market because uh, there are much more demand for the goods and there is shortage of uh, these uh, goods in the market. That is the reason why there is hike in the price. Please, that is a trickle effect of uh, what you see the IMF and the World Bank what they have handed over to Nigeria. Let me explain what I mean. A situation where you, see, where you come into Nigeria and say you are developing partners, you are determining when Nigeria should privatize and when Nigeria should, uh, you know, uh, pass certain policies. The policies of SAP of 1986 is what has made Nigeria the world capital of, world poverty capital of the world. IMF gave us devaluation and they said structural adjustment program. We are still adjusting and it has brought us to poverty capital of the world. They said we should privatize every 
a corporation owned by the government how can you as a government you know that is uh, in charge of a sovereign nation you allow you know america and uh, britain and the west to determine your economic policies you know you allow 95 percent of what is happening in uh, your country to be determined by the so-called development development partners the full stuff you see is cause effect what you should address is are the policies meted out by the central bank and who are those people determining what is happening there it is the imf rolling out policies telling you when to you know when to uh, devalue your currency your currency is too strong devalue it increase money in fuel increase money in uh, vat and the rest of them but you don't check the trickle down effect there are dollars and their pounds selling who has devalued it is anyone stronger than dollars or pounds selling they are still holding on to it but they come to africa the african continent is under siege by china and the west that is the problem that is what is causing the problem you are seeing in the market so we should should arise and see their presence as you know an unwelcome one they are not the ones to determine policies that should take place in Nigeria.